INFJ and INTJ. Why do these personality types do so well together? Stick around for today's show to find out. One surefire way to find out why these personalities are such a great match is to take a look at their function stack. Most people are familiar with the preferences, introversion, extroversion, intuition, sensing, thinking, feeling, judging, and perceiving. But there's another level to Myers-Briggs and they're called the cognitive functions. And you can learn a lot about any personality by checking those cognitive functions out. Now, any personality is made up of four cognitive functions and they're arranged in a hierarchy from the strongest, most influential function down to the weakest called the inferior. So let's take a look at the functions for the INFJ and the INTJ side by side. In order, the INFJ functions include introverted intuition, extroverted feeling, introverted thinking, and extroverted sensing. The INTJ functions include introverted intuition, extroverted thinking, introverted feeling, and extroverted sensing. So right off the bat, you'll see that both of these personality types have a lot in common in terms of their cognitive functions. So let's drill down a bit deeper and see just why these two types get along well. And yes, I am foreshadowing, they do get along well. Perhaps the most important reason why both personality types get along and tend to see eye to eye is they lead with the same dominant function. It's the first function. And this one, as I pointed out earlier, tends to be most influential in the personality. So you'll see that the INFJ and the INTJ both have introverted intuition for their first function. And this shouldn't be taken for granted because very few personality types have introverted intuition as their first or second function. Really only 8% fall into this category having it as their first or second function. And an even smaller percentage have introverted intuition as their first function. So it's kind of rare right off the bat. And this is one of the reasons that INFJs often feel misunderstood because most people don't think this way. It's a rare way of seeing the world. Another reason why this is a big point of relation for the INFJ and INTJ is that introverted intuition sees the world through the eyes of intuition. So both INFJs and INTJs will enjoy talking about the future, will enjoy looking for patterns, digging deeper and understanding why, they will both love transformations. Now, INFJs are going to tend to enjoy transformations in people, and INTJs are going to like to see it in businesses or numbers, but both are looking for growth and some kind of transformation. And actually, in certain instances, you can argue that INFJs would like it in the business world, and INTJs could like it personally. So we'll get into that in a bit. But they're going to have a lot to talk about, and they're going to use the same kind of language. People who lead with intuition tend to prefer metaphors and word pictures and use the same kinds of language. Yes, they'll still use concrete specifics because that works for everybody, but they'll be okay talking in imagery and symbols and really enjoy that sort of thing. And they'll love to dig deeper. So long story short, this is one of the biggest reasons why the INFJ and INTJ will see eye to eye in many instances. Another point of connection for the INFJ and INTJ personalities is feeling. If you look in the second place of the INFJ personality, you'll see extroverted feeling, which is the way an INFJ relates to the outside world. In the third place of uh, the function stack for an INTJ, you'll see introverted feeling. Now, most people won't say that introverted feeling is a strength for INTJs, but actually, since INTJs are introverts and introverted feeling is an introverted function, it wouldn't be unheard of for an INTJ to develop relatively strong introverted feeling. Depending on that unique person's bent, interests, and personal experiences, growing up environment, and a number of other factors, where an INTJ and an INFJ share a close bond and connect over similar interests, such as psychology, which has an appeal to those who are drawn toward feeling sort of interests and also like to understand what makes people tick, they like to understand motivations, underlying meanings, that sort of thing. The two personalities are likely to be drawn together. So that's one aspect. And also where INTJs and INFJs connect over personal transformations and growing themselves, personal growth programs, this can draw the two together. And there's the appeal of feeling plus introverted intuition that makes it happen. So feeling and the two types of feeling 
can be a point of connection for these personality types. One of my good friends is an INTJ and he's always working on some kind of personal growth plan. At one point he was working on his balance while he was brushing his teeth. So he would stand on his right leg and see how long he could stand on his right leg and then shift over to the left leg and do likewise. And this again wants to help him improve his stability over time. I share that ridiculous example just as a particular instance of an INTJ working on some aspect of personal growth. And again, INFJs are often drawn to personal growth as well. So this is a place where people connect. And for my friend and I, it was a place where we connected. Since I shared extroverted feeling and introverted feeling, it's only fair that we look at the third function for an INFJ, which is introverted thinking, and then look at the second function for an INTJ, which is extroverted thinking. You'll see again that the two functions, which are only one place apart, can be a point of connection because both people, both personalities enjoy thinking about the logical ramifications of particular decisions and thinking long-term in a logical way. Now, for an INFJ, it tends to be more philosophical, but that's not to say that it can't also be that way for an INTJ as well. It's just that INTJs are more anchored in tangible, practical, measurable, here and now empirical data, whereas INFJs may be more existential and pulled away from concrete evidence, but both personality types can go both ways. That's just a pattern that I've seen in looking at different types of philosophers. But both enjoy logical thought and looking at numbers to a certain extent to see how growth can happen. And again, it depends on the particular person. If you have an INFJ and an INTJ who both enjoy technology, this can also be a point of connection because both types, again, based on introverted intuition, like to think about the future and change, making things better. But they're, they're interested in different types of technology that can help them achieve goals and do things more effectively. And they like to understand the system and the parts and how they can increase their efficiency and effectiveness as well, at least for some INFJs and INTJs. It's not across the board. These are just observations, again, on patterns that I've observed. I'll give you one more example. I've noticed a lot of INFJs and INTJs both interested in online business, and there's some logical planning that draws on the thinking aspect of the personality type, whether INFJ or INTJ, because people have to think about how they can sell a business service or product and meet people's needs, but also bring in a profit. And they have to decide how they're going to set up an org chart, how they're going to make sure they're bringing in enough income to cover expenses, but yet to have a profit and pay employees. Lots of logical factors with cause and effect relationships. So these are things that can draw both INFJs and INTJs, although the INTJ has a leg up at least when it comes to the organizational planning part. But again, it can be a draw and a connection for both personality types. One more way that INFJs and INTJs connect is their fourth function, extroverted sensing. And this may be another one of those obvious ones because it's the same function in the same place. And this is what makes INFJs and INTJs so similar. Apart from their introverted intuition, they struggle with the same things. Both tend to have difficulty with the details, the bills, the unexpected cooking and shopping, the unexpected flat tire, the things that pop up that they just have to get done that are very detail oriented, but they're not really interested in. Whatever rips them out of their favorite world, their NI world, where they'd be happiest, focusing on insights and future plans, on visions, when they're drawn out of that to take care of the mundane day-to-day -day tasks that are very necessary to operating in our world, they can get frustrated. So they struggle with the same sorts of things. On the flip side, it's worth noting that extroverted sensing is also a source of joy, pleasure, and excitement for INFJs and INTJs. Whereas it's a challenge and a point of frustration, it's also a draw toward the great outdoors, toward physical exercise, enjoying music, great music, or scents, smells, exotic senses, like tasting some kind of exotic food or visiting a foreign country. There are INFJs and INTJs that really enjoy traveling abroad if they have the means and the opportunity to do so. So extroverted sensing is also a way that they enjoy 
exercising or being outside or just spending their free time in general. I know no lack of INFJ yoga instructors or INFJ people who are interested in exercise. Personally, one of the best ways I kill stress is to go down to the basement and exercise or go for a walk or a run. I just enjoy being outside. I have a couple INTJ friends who are runners or at least were for a really long time until one of them had trouble with his knees, but now he's into biking and the other one still enjoys running, but has moved and had to kind of adapt to that. I have another INTJ friend from college who really enjoyed fly fishing. And actually that's what brought the two of us together because we loved being outside and often our discussions would go toward deeper topics like psychology or philosophy or spiritual growth, something to that nature. And we would do it while we were immersed in water up to our hips, casting a fly to an opposite bank. It was just a really good time and something we enjoyed connecting over. So to wrap up, those are four main reasons that INFJs and INTJs may connect and connect on a deep level. And just to reiterate, the first and foremost, probably the most important one, is that both personality types see the world the same way. There aren't many people who use introverted intuition as their dominant function. So when you find someone else who thinks like you, or at least gathers information this way as you do, it's not unusual for you and that other person to connect. It, it's going to be a really enjoyable experience. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't say that sometimes these two personalities butt heads miss each other or get bored with each other because the INFJ is more interested in people uh, usually, and I would say taking care of a large group of people than the INTJ. And the INTJ is going to be more interested in empirical evidence and data and numbers or some kind of research than the INFJ. Now, I should be careful with saying research because research takes all kinds of forms, but that numbers-driven, data-driven, impersonal research is maybe a better way to say it. So the two may miss each other or have different interests altogether. And then there's the difference between introverted feeling and introverted thinking as a tertiary function, the way they make decisions based on these functions, because we don't always just use our extroverted feeling or extroverted thinking to make decisions, we might butt heads over that as well. So we are different people altogether, but there is a lot in common and a lot that draws the two of us together. And one more side note is that even though we both lead with introverted intuition, this can also cause problems too, because we're pretty happy going off in our own world and learning about our favorite subjects for extended periods of time. So while we may enjoy being together, we might spend too much time apart and that can cause difficulties because you have to be together to nurture the relationship. And when one person seems like he or she is cold because they're not communicating as much, it might just be that he or she is caught up in research or just an in interest or studying and learning about something and forgets to connect with the other person. So that can be a challenge, making sure that you come out of your favorite world to connect with each other. But by and large, INFJs and INTJs usually have a good time together if they develop a close bond. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it served you and that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to learn more about your INFJ personality, I'd love to give you a free copy of my book, The INFJ Personality Guide. In it, you'll learn about the mindsets and motivations that cause you to do what you do, as well as some common INFJ challenges and solutions to those challenges. Ultimately, I wrote the book to help you understand that you're not messed up or broken, but just different. And the world needs those special gifts that you bring to the table. You can get this book free of charge one of two ways. And the first is to text the letters INFJ to the number 444-999. Or you can visit ispeakpeople.com forward slash INFJ dash personality dash guide. And you can find that link in the description below this video. I hope that you enjoyed today's show and that you found it interesting and helped you better understand yourself and perhaps the INTJ in your life or vice versa if you're an INTJ watching this. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, then I would encourage you to do that. There are new videos each week with tips, insights, and ideas that cover aspects of the INFJ personality for INFJs just like you. And if you are a regular subscriber, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you on the next show.